most people don't know that 5G is not all created equal, Pat. And you and I can actually go back a few years and remember uh, 5GE, or what was it? Yeah, it, you know, when at and got a lot of rife for this, but they had their whole enhanced uh, 4G LTE and they were calling it like the, was it 5GE? Was that what they were calling it? I'm trying to remember that, but, and it was yeah. basically not real 5G, it was fake 5G. But in the beginning, it was something that, App, uh, sorry, phones, both iPhones and Samsung phones that were on AT&T's network, people thought they were on 5G for a period of time when they were really just getting enhanced LTE. Then 5G came and, you know, every company sort of does this at their own pace. Companies that are using um, mostly the Qualcomm components, the Samsung's, Oppo's, Xiaomi's, they're all putting in the newest, like you said, 5G RF systems, and they're embracing all the channels for millimeter wave. And they're doing it on every device around the world to make sure that as these networks, as the service providers spin up these new networks, the phones are going to be as capable as possible to deliver the best experience. And just for those out there, there's kind of two bands, two, two, there's millimeter wave, and then there's sub six. Sub six 5G is kind of this robust, reliable, mid low band uh, 5G that basically is a lot like 4G LTE in terms of the speed, the dependability, reliability, in terms of your experience as a user, it'll feel pretty similar. Um, but millimeter waves at a whole nother, whole nother level. This is where you're talking about getting gig speeds up and down in, in places. Um, it's very specialized. It was built for 5G and it's a complete unique offering that's associated with 5G. And so on a worldwide basis, you know, the question I have about this, Pat, is Everybody thought with this second generation, the iPhone 13, which is now the second phone that Apple has that offers 5G on a worldwide basis, the first generation, okay, you know, Apple typically slow rolls everything. Remember when the first iPhone came out, it was on the Edge network. Didn't even use 3G, even though 3G was available. Um, now we're all the way to five, and millimeter wave is established. It's been deployed on all these devices for a long time, Pat. We're in a second launch and this isn't only a second launch, but this is a super cycle this is the 13 this isn't the 12 plus pro max interim launch and yet again for whatever reason apple decided on a global basis it did not need to deliver millimeter wave meaning basically anybody that buys an international apple iphone 13 is still going to be essentially using the, the sub six version of 5G, which again will feel a whole lot like the LTE experience that they'd had prior. And so this is where you look at lagging innovation. It's not that the company can't do it because they have the relationship with Qualcomm. They have the internal Silicon building that they're doing. They have, they could have developed the millimeter wave because they're doing it in the US, Pat. They're doing it in the US and people in the US already get this experience, but they're basically saying, we're gonna give you the lowest possible quality 5G experience on the globe to this 22% market share that we have. And here's my bet, Pat. My bet, got to turn my branding back on. I need everybody to see my logo. My bet is that they know that when they do another cycle in six months, they can make that change then and they'll sell a whole bunch, whole bunch eight, nine figures more phones and people will buy them. And so this is the question I have for the market, for the market, Pat. It's not just about innovation, it's about how long does the market put up with the fact that Apple actually delays offering the most innovative solutions and products to its customers because they know you will pay for two, three, four versions of the same, effectively the same product in order to get tiny iterative improvements. And this is just one more example of Apple doing this. And on a global basis, as a guy who still uses an Apple, not gonna lie about that, I do use a Samsung too, but it pisses me off. <laughs> So Daniel, I made this comment in our initial call in on this and it's really a half-life, right? If Apple continues to do things like this, then it starts to erode uh, the brand. Uh, Apple's smart and they probably will come back next time with something that doesn't piss people, piss people off. I think it's a cost reduction effort. Right, that's what this is. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna save the money of the uh, of the RF back end and the testing and all that stuff. And I know that my users once a 5G millimeter wave is available in their backyard in a big in a bigger way, they'll they'll have to go out and buy my new phone. 
So Apple knows where it can stomp on its users. It, it knows where it can't. Uh, and I don't think it's going to make uh, much of a difference at all. But I think that we do need to call things out like that because I don't think it's right. Um, but in the end, Apple's a dominant market player, um, you know, has a, a monopolistic market share uh, in, in the United States. And um, it's just leveraging what it can do because it can. Absolutely. Well, you think they do the opposite then. They'd give less in the U.S. where they have dominance and they'd give more globally to try to convince people. I can't figure it out entirely, Pat, but everything you mentioned is correct. Maybe it's about margins. Maybe it's about um, cycles and more sales, more revenues, greater yeah. returns to shareholders. But what it isn't about is it isn't about being the most innovative company on the planet. 